Good afternoon and good evening, children. Good evening, ma'am. Good, e good evening, good Nishan. Evening, good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, ma evening Arunachalam. Good evening, Arunachalam. Say good evening. Good evening, Ganesh. Good evening, ma'am. Good boy. Good, good evening, Shubhangi. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Anjali. Good evening, ma'am. And good evening, Vansh. Good evening, ma'am. Very good. Okay, one word about each one of you. Give me your one good quality which you have. Nishant, what are you very proud of? You're very proud of. This is what I, is my good quality, mummy, ma'am. One good quality. Um, which you're proud of. Um, huh? I think I'm honest to myself in whatever I do. Don't think. Honest, you are honest or you're not? <laughs> I am honest. Good. Okay, Arunachala, what are you very proud of? Nishant says I'm honest to myself. And you? Arunachala? Okay, Ganesh? You're looking at Ganesh also. Mom. I'm proud of you. Oh, you do so good I yoga. <laughs> Excellent. Arunachala, you want to say something? Uh, no, I think that I'm really hardworking. So I think that I'm very quality one. You're very hardworking, you said, right? So here, Nishan says, I'm proud of being honest. Arunachala says, I'm very hardworking. Ganesh says, I'm very good in yoga. And Shubhangi, you? My mom, I'm proud and patriotic. Oh, you're very patriotic. Oh, you're very patriotic. Yes, ma'am. You love, you love, you love, uh, you love. Uh, so, so you think you are very so patriotic. You think you are very patriotic. Yes, ma'am. Can we check the? Anjali's. Anjali. Huh? No. Okay, Anjali, you. Um, I think I don't really get short tempered, so I really like that. You are doing what? What did he say? Um, I do not easily get. I do not easily get short tempered, so I like it. So you say I do not get easily angry. Yeah. Sometimes you do. Yes, ma'am. Okay, once. No, I'm proud that I'm a social activist. Mm -hmm. You're a social activist. And you're from Chennai? Yes, ma'am. Where are you from, Nishant? I'm from Chennai, sir. Arunachalam, you, where are you from? Where are you from, Ganesh? Ma'am, I'm from Namakkal. Where is that? Namakkal? Nam yes, ma'am. From Chennai. Chennai. Shubhangi, where are you from? Ma'am, I'm from Delhi. Oh, you're sitting from Delhi? Where are you from? Where are you from? I'm sitting from Delhi. East Delhi. And Anjali, you? Yes, ma'am. And Anjali, you? Ma'am, I'm from Jaipur. Wow. And once you're from Chennai, you said that. There's an echo here. How do we say that? Can you switch off your mics? Then you'll be able to hear each other and when I ask you, then you speak, okay? Or you raise your hand and say, I want to speak. So the rules will be, raise your hand, I want to speak. Or I will come to you saying, once will you reply, then you speak. If you keep your mic off, then everybody will be able to listen to each other. Alright? Okay, say yes. Like that, say yes. Yes, say yes. Okay, you heard me? Anjali, you heard me? Good. You heard me? Okay. Now today I'm starting a book reading series with you. Book reading series with me. A book reading which has been written but not by me but my sister and my friend. This book has been written by my sister. Her name is Dr. Rita Pashavriya and also um, by Anu Pashavriya. My two sisters have told the story. 
and then it's edited by my friend Dr. Amrita Bal. So this story book is being written by two sisters of mine, Rita and Anu, and it's been edited by my friend Amrita. This is how this book, which you see on your screen, is written, Kiran Bedi, Making of the Top Cop. So I'm going to take you through this story, but I'm not finishing the book today. It's a series. It's a, going to be a series. And after the six of you see this, you can get this book. It's a very cheap book, very low cost book. But uh, something which is introducing you to my 25 years of my life. This finishes at the age of 25. It, that is why it's called the making of the top cop. It's called making because by this time, by this age of 23, 22 and a half, I've entered the Indian police service. And I've often asked this question, what made you go into the Indian police service? What made you become a police officer? Did you always want to be? Um, and that you were a girl? How did you do it? How, what inspired you? These are all the questions I'll be always asked. What kind of friends did you have? How did you spend time with your sisters? All this. So, so friends, I, this is a series. It's not going to be finishing the book. I'm going to read and share with you a few, few pages of the book. After that, we will be inviting in the next series a set of next nine students. I think we can accommodate nine, I'm told. Isha told me. Isha who's handling the technology here, sitting on my right. And um, Asha Gupta, who is also the originator of this idea. So I owe this event to Asha Gupta, who is the controller of our Raj Divas, And Isha Arora, who is a, who's a lead member of this social media team in uh, Raj Divas. These both women, young women, have actually originated this idea of book reading. So we've decided that we will read a chapter of the book or two chapters, introduce you, because I have about 50 minutes to share with you, because then we have an evening conference here every day. So, but I'll introduce you and show you, you are lucky that you, I'm introducing the book to you. Now this is like, let me show you the next page. Can we go to the next page, Isha? Yes. And see, this is an illustrative story book. Now this is a picture of my four sisters and my parents. Now if you see the first lesson here is the beginning is like this. That where you have a loving family and a shared family and it is a strength to each other, it, it spreads a lot of joy. We did many things together. So my first page of this book is a message. A where you, when you grow up together, you share things together, you eat together, you pray together, you play together, and you listen to your parents. A happy family always produces better people. It produces people who are happy in their life subsequently. So it's important. Now we are four sisters, and the one in red sweater is, her, is the older one. She's Shashi, she lives in Montreal, and she's a professor in the uh, university. She teaches philosophy, and she's very good in art, so she runs her own art gallery. I'm number two in this, that's me, the, if you see my head popping out. Then my third sister is Rita, who's written this book, and my fourth sister is Anu, who's written the book, and my mummy and my daddy. Now, this book is available on Amazon.com, you can always ask them. It's just about, I think, and it's a diamond copy book. Uh, 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 you can order it and read it. It's an illustrative story book, and you'll see the next illustration. But when I show you this, I want you to see how we were all four sisters, and we had no brother. But my parents at that time, when we were growing up, were never saying they wish God we had a son. They used to love us and take care of us. And that is how they made each one of us literally tennis champions. My younger sister is a leading lawyer in America. My younger sister, my third sister, was a lead worldwide leader in autism and clinical psychologist. My elder sister, I've already told you, and I'm the one who's... So my poor, poor, both parents invested the maximum into education. They would always say that you take as much as you want for education. Uh, there's no end to education. So number one, th second lesson which I would share with you through this picture is 
that where the parents invest into education of the children, children love education. They were investing into education, sent us to the best school possible, best university, college possible, made us play and invested. They may not have enough savings to save for themselves because they were a part of an extended joint family and the grandfather controlled all the incomes. So my father too was dependent on, my, on, on his father for many resources till, as I said, the property got divided and my father became um, uh, self-reliant with his own income. But till then, they were never compromising on our quality of education and our upbringing and nutrition. My mother was very, very good, very fond of good nutrition. I'm giving you certain messages. Today, if I have energy and I have good health till now, it's because of the, my mother. She gave me very good eating habits. She uh, uh, made us drink well. We, we never ate useless food. She was very, very fond of good nutrition at home. So mummy ensured that we all eat well, we sleep well, we rest well, we work well, we study well. Mummy was the one and daddy made sure we play well, we played a lot of tennis and very positive thinker. My father was a great reader and reading by the father, hard work of my mother is the one which gave us love in all sisters. So caring home, caring home always produces happy children. And then where you have a mother, father who believe in good health, then children benefit. So this is my opening uh, uh, remark of this book, The Making of the Top. If I wouldn't explain to you, then I wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to tell you why God has given me energy today to continue working 18 hours a day and still I don't get tired. And I don't get tired. I'm telling you, I, when I sleep at night, I'm not tired. I just sleep because I think it's better to sleep because I have, I have interesting things to do the next day. So I, I sleep not like a, oh God, thank you, I'm sleeping. I just sleep because I have to sleep because otherwise I have to keep awake and um, it will have an impact on the next day. So it's because of this foundation. I am talking about foundation. Parents are always a foundation. And sisters, brothers, family is the foundation. So if your foundation is strong, the rest of the structure you make always is strong. The foundation is the roots. Is the, that's why of any building where the foundation is strong, you can build more stories. And you have a high rise because the foundation is strong. So the stronger the foundation, more the energy, more the capacity to work, more the capacity and more the positive attitude. Now let me show you the next page. And Isha, is, uh, uh, thanks to Isha that you have these visuals today again and she's organized it for you. I'll take you to the next page of my book. You don't have it? No, ma'am. Do we go to the story? Uh -huh. Go to the next one. Yes, yeah. that's the visual. I'm on visuals, not on text. Mm. Friends, this is the first page of this book. If you see, I'm showing you this book. I'm showing you this book and this is the first page of this book. I've already talked to you about this. And this is the first page of this book. So Isha is showing you this is the first page. When you open this, this is the way it is. See? Now, what do you see in this picture? You see Golden Temple. And you see, and I've written here, four of us were born in the holy city of Amritsar. Famous for the Golden Temple, Durgyana Mandir, Jalyamala Bagh and more. See, so many things together. Look at the three things together. Golden Temple is known for love, harmony, devotion. There are thousands of people, thousands of all faiths assemble at the Golden Temple and thousands of people eat a free langar. It's a very blessed place. Around it, the city grew and that's what I'm a product of. So I'm a product of a very holy city, a spiritual city, which has the golden temple. And it is this temple where my grandmother and my mother used to take us on a regular basis. We used to go there with our grandparents, visiting the temple and uh, understanding, listening to good words, morality, ethics, devotion. And here was a place which was an assembly of all the faiths. Do you know the foundation stone of this temple was by a Muslim? What was by a Muslim? 
so it is a very pra a place of interfaith and it was destroyed in between it was rebuilt and you know what this is a very holy place here is the land where when it was not built as a temple even B lord buddha sat here to meditate it was made by of course guru arjun dev and as it is in the later the sick early later part of the 16th century so it goes goes back to 16th century now 2020 so i'm now giving you a little bit of awareness about this golden temple the golden temple is at dalyawala bag have you been to amritsar any time have you been to amritsar have you seen this nishan yes you seen it ganesh have you seen it ganesh have you seen this golden temple ganesh okay shubhangi have you seen this golden temple Yes, oh yeah, you close to oh, Delhi. Oh yeah, you close to Delhi. And Anjali, have you seen Golden Temple? No, ma'am. Okay, one day you are. Uh, you said you were in Delhi, Jaipur. You're not very far. So when the time comes, whenever the travels open, go and visit this Golden Temple. It's a very, very historical place. It's got a lovely sarovar. It's a very lovely historical place. And almost 19 hours of the day. The Guru Granth Sahib is read here, so it's a very, very holy place. Avansh, have you seen Golden Temple? No. Yes, you must see it, and you will feel the power of the place. And the Sarovar, you can have a dip in the Sarovar. It's just very, very so. And of course, they all have festivals, but it goes back to the late 16th century where it was built. But why is it gold golden? Who put the gold a lot on it was Maharaja Ranjit Singh, who ruled the whole of Big Punjab. He was a he was a very noble uh, ruler. Punjab no, uh, owes a lot to Maharaja Ranjit Singh. If you go to Amritsar, I believe there's a very good museum now made of uh, and there's a Maharaja Ranjit Singh museum also. You must go and visit the museum and then of course there's a partition museum also which has been built. So when you go to Amritsar, it's a very historical city. I think it's probably, uh, probably I believe, it's a UNESCO city now. That's why they got a lot of funding to uh, improve it. So I used to go to Amritsar. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't go to Amritsar. I was born in Amritsar and my grandparents used to take me to this place, which is a holy city, where all faiths met. All faiths met. So I, in the beginning itself, start to believe in the harmony of faiths. Not one faith, but harmony of faiths, a foundation stone made. So these are the sanskar, these are the values. If you imbibe as a child, you become very inclusive as a human being. You become very inclusive. You become humane and you embrace humanity. You don't exclude anybody. You embrace everybody. So this is what it happened. And then the Durgana temple is another famous temple of a Hindu temple, also of the same type which was there and then called Jallianwala Bagh where you know the main massacre of the 13th of April happened where General Dyer opened fire on, um, uh, on, on people who were assembled in that and you know that was a turning point, one very major turning point of our Indian National Freedom Movement. So I'm a product of Golden Temple, Durgana Temple and then the Jallianwala Bagh which was next door to my house. So let me show you now my next page of the book. Show next slide. See, this is my picture where I'm with my grandmother and say belonging to interfaith family. We grew up. We grew up uh, holy places with the Amritsar. So the message was, in, and see, all of our sisters are shown by this artist saying Amritsar nourished Kiran with its unique spirit, power, and energy, shaping her to become who she is. This is what my authors have written. But what is important here is that if as a family, also when you visit holy places like these, you develop more internal bonding of love and care. This is where it was. So it's, this is a very important to understand all faiths and emerge as a greater human being. Then I'll tell you more as I go next. Let's go to the next slide, whatever I have. This is drawn by an artist. Now from temples and devotional places with grandparents. See, my two sisters, we used to play a lot. Now, outdoor playing these days at the moment is inhibited 
but very soon as things become normal we used to play a lot so we would be very naughty we used to play we used to hire a bike for for a few few, few pennies and then it, you could hire a school only for half an hour uh, the cycle for half an hour so we were always in a hurry to take a bike so this is the next page which is the illustration of the book let me show you here see this is how it's coming this is how it's coming see this is what i'm showing you this is how the book is and the book is in all languages it's also in tamil it's in hindi it's in uh, punjabi it's all 16 languages the diamond diamond books has translated this in all 16 languages so that this book becomes available for children um, all over the uh, in all the states in india now what i'm show you is this is a love for outdoor if you like outdoor when you're a child it builds you more it makes you more fit it became makes you hungry for food it also gives you an outdoor it also gives you love for nature so you it puts you into activity if you see here saying we lovingly call her spent her early childhood outdoors games etc in clothes this what because my sisters are writing this this is what they are saying that and they used to call me kinni didi because kinni was my pet name for them as we were lovingly call her spent early childhood so this is my childhood now now i'm from uh, going to my by being four sisters being very cared and loved how my grandparents to used to take us to the temples and the golden temples we used to be a lot outdoor girls playing amongst our sisters cycling around falling getting up fighting struggling hiring a cycle for one hour keeping to the time oh cycle time half an hour over let's go quickly we have to deposit the cycle back we used to hire a bike it was called you could hire a bike to ride a bike and this is what we used to do i'll take you to the next activity This is the Jallianwala Bagh I talked to you about. This is the a glimpse into that uh, which we referred. This is the place now. Of course, it's all spruced up. But if you see these squares, these are those bullet marks where there was a there was an open firing by General Dyer and his armed forces. See, these are those marks which have been shown. These are holes of the bullets which went into that building. That it's the Jallianwala Bagh, and this is the memorial. so you when you go there you will be able to uh, see it so this is i thought i'd share with you with is that another good slide next one let's that's okay i've already spoken now i'm coming to my four fathers i kiran bedi is my married surname my maiden surname was peshawarya my great great grandfather was a wealthy trader who migrated to amritsar in 1860 from peshawar which is now in pakistan that's how the family got its surname called peshawarya so this is these are my my great great grandfather his whose na his name is lala hargobind and this is my grandfather whose name was muni lal peshawarya and my mother pritam kaur grandmother that's my mummy's grand mummy's parents is bishan das and kripal kaur my uh, grand my nani grandmother and my grandfather <clears throat> this grandfather of mine was a very educated man and a wealthy man and had lot of wealth in amritsar and uh, uh, my grandfather was also very spiritual soul he used to go to brindaban every day and he had hundreds of cows in his house or the my parents grandparents would first feed the cows before they would eat anything on their own so and my grandfather a great grandfather's wealth was so big that we have peshawarya dharmsalas in amritsar and brindaban pilgrimages pilgrimage houses those days we didn't have hotels they were rest houses for the pilgrims so we have peshawarya dharmsalas and there's a big peshawarya trust though it is very badly managed now because none of us are available <coughs> but it's had a lot of property and there's peshawarya dharmsalas unfortunately not being well maintained one of my cousin brother is stepping in to see if he can revive those trusts but this was the family which came to amritsar with a lot of wealth and they were very very landed plenty of money available in amritsar so my maiden surname surname was peshawarya kiran peshawarya that's how the first before i was married i was already known 
um, as Kiran Prashavya, who was also the national tennis champion. Later on, I became Kiran Prashavya Bedi, and gradually Prashavya became P, and Bedi became more uh, prominent. So this is my grand, great grandparents. But why I'm showing you is that my uh, my roots of community giving, my roots of sharing and giving came from here. And from here, my great great grandfather built up Pishavriya Dharam Salas for the and began dispensaries at that time for that early age. And my great grandparents from mother would be would be very would feed others before they would uh, feed themselves. My grandfather was because he was an educated man and probably the first man in Amritsar to own a car. But he was a selfish man and he did not believe in education of girls and my father defied him. So that's a story to tell later on. But my grandfather otherwise was a very bright man and had very good networks because he was a rich man and had very good connections and could help anybody who needed any help. So he was, a, you see from here, I saw that when you are in authority, you can help others. And this, my grandfather, a lot of people used to come to him for help and he was helping others. Like he would ring up the dip, uh, district collector, he would ring up the SSP and get things done because he was an influential man. <clears throat> so my mother's side was nobility and whereas my grandfather, my father's side was wealth and influence. See, so, and my great grandfather brought in an inheritance of giving, uh, but not keeping things to himself, but was giving. So very important is that when you're growing up, if you get these kinds of uh, subtle uh, influences, it helps you grow in, uh, in life. So I'll take you to the next one. So this is about the book reading. I was thinking, go you to the next page. Now, this, this is the view of my parents, my mother and my father. I already told you, my father's name was Prakash Lal and mummy's name was Premlata. These are my parents. But you see, they were prayers at home. So it was from, as I said, Lala Hargum has set up many sarayas called Pishavya Dharamsalas for pilgrims, visiting different holy cities. But there was a regular Buddha Purnima and regular, every time uh, there was a, the auspicious day of the month, the priest would come home uh, when I was a child and I used to see that they all would assemble and do prayers together. So there was a lot of spirituality, a lot of prayers, a lot of devotion, a lot of gratitude, a lot of giving and a lot of coming together of, uh, of the family. This was my bua. This was my mother, my daddy's sister sitting behind because it was a very good extended family. So they were, they were regular visitors. This is how we, were, we spent our growth growing up, time growing up. Next please. See, I talked to you about Dharamsalas. This is a view of what was happening in our Sarai Dharamsala. These still exist there in, in place in Amritsar and Brindavan and elsewhere. So uh, this is where this is a view of the Dharamsala Prashavriya Trust. Next one. As I told you, my grandfather was a wealthy man, and at that time I have seen him drive in a buggy. We had a, a horse cart and we used to have even uh, go-downs in the house and these do uh, horses used to be a part of the buggy. So, and he used to go in a buggy. And, um, but he would never allow us to sit, right? He was very self, this thing that it's only meant for him. So my father was very fond of cigar also. So he used to be uh, regularly having a cigar and go by a buggy and buy a horse. So those days, but later on he became the first man in Amritsar to own a car. He was a wealthy man, but these are the good old times. Now you don't see these horse carts, but I've seen them when I was growing up. So there was a simplicity about it. While we go biking, we go in a Tonga in a school, my father would never give us his cart. So I also saw selfishness. I also saw how one could be um, holding back things from their children. I saw both. I saw a grandfather who was very giving, and I also saw a grandfather who was selfish. We saw both and I started to choose being uh, giving rather than selfish. You can be influenced for both, but you can pick and choose. That's how you grow. And then came tennis. Then came my tennis. My father was a tennis player. So when there's a sports in the family, 
it helps. This is my father's picture when he was a very good tennis player. And this was a service club, Amritsar, where we all used to play together. We used to watch him play and then he brought us also into the... So sports in the family also helps. Like music in the family, art in the family, uh, 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 culture in the family, a right authorship in the family, uh, a skill in the family. But a sports in the family and music in the family, I think has a very, very high influence on the upbringing of you. So I would suggest, have a look at this. If your parents are involved, borrow it, take it. If not, learn it. Because music, sports, art and culture, whether you learn it from school, doesn't matter. Because those days, uh, now schools are full of extracurricular activities. So therefore, there's a reason where if you don't have it at home or parents have no time or they're very busy these days, they have long working hours, they commute long hours. It wasn't like that when I was growing up. They all had time to each other. Cities were small. You could go to each other quickly. So their things were different. Now things are different. Now parents are all busy. They have long extended working day and therefore do not. Therefore schools have to compensate. So when schools have uh, these kind of extracurricular activities, you should fully utilize them because this is an opportunity for you to learn uh, art, culture, extracurricular, whether it's drama, whether it's writing, whether it's declamations, whether it's NCC, all kinds of sports activities participate in the athletic meets and, uh, so that you become more all-rounder. This is how I became an all-rounder because there were sports in the family. So there was giving in the family, there was sports in the family and I could learn at, uh, and sports early on in age coming in makes you a more a stronger all rounded physically also become very fit so i should be very fit as to eat a lot run a lot play a lot and very energy energetic and i had a lot of good health that is where my energy came from next now comes the real thing and i think i'll st uh, uh, stop my first part of the book on this chapter uh, on this page and leave you now to take over and go to Amazon and pick up this book and read for yourself because then comes how did I study, how did I play, how did I spend my time, how did I make friends, what did I do when I was traveling and then um, how did I compete, how did I qualify in the police academy and then when they told me don't take the IPS, what did I do, it's all in the book. Now I would suggest that you girls, you children who are getting introduced to this book, if you want to know more Pick up this. These, these are the kinds of books you need to be reading. It's not a question of my book. It's a question of you taking inspiration from others so that you can uh, build upon these books. These books are written not to be sold. These books are written to be inspiring you to read history and learn, pick up uh, inspiration from those. Now, when I go back to this, uh, I'll show you back this. This story is a very interesting story. Here, my father is talking to his grandfather. Uh, sorry, my grandfather. My dad is talking to his father and see what he's saying. Pa Papa, my uh, uh, grandfather is saying, Prakash, here is your allowance for this month. Remember I told you that daddy used to be on a monthly allowance and he said, Prakash, here is your allowance for this month. And here my father is, uh, is thinking, this is thinking and daddy is saying that he doesn't realize I have three school going children. We were then three, the fourth sister had yet to come. And my daddy is probably thinking that my father is only giving me, but not knowing that I have three school going children. And the grandfather, my father, father, my grandfather gave him the pittance of allowance. He never increased it. As I told you that he probably never, and, and he used to, here it is a, a comment given by my sisters. It says, despite his education, he had feudal attitudes and a controlling nature. He made sure that our father worked for him for a meager out-of-pocket allowance. So where is the change? Where is the change? So my grandfather's logic for this allowance was that his son did not need any more money as all expenses were provided for such as the kitchen and the club bills. So he said he was not bothered about the school fees which my father and mother were paying. He thought the, there was a common kitchen, the club bill was paid, it was going into a common account, my father didn't need anything more. So he never compensated him 
now for the three. And at that time, my father was sending three girls, three of us, to the most expensive school in Amritsar called the Sacred Heart School, which is a Catholic school. You see how interestingly my upbringing was. I used to go to the Darbar Sahab. I used to go to the Durgana Mandir. Then I went to a Catholic school. So I prayed in the church. I prayed in the uh, uh, Darbar Sahab. I prayed in Durgana Mandir. So for me, it was a very inclusive growth. So, but, but there was a fee in that school, which uh, my father and my mother used to manage it by uh, getting it from their own parents. My mummy used to go home and get money from her parents to pay for our fee. Uh, so, but we children did not know how they were doing it. But my father did not say that he does not have enough money to pay for our school because the grandfather was not paying, because my grandfather was not liberal for children, girls' education. He thought that when the girls grow up, there's enough property to give them as dowry and they can get married. But my father defied him. I don't know whether there is a, uh, if, uh, there's a chapter here. Is there? No, he didn't. No? Uh, that's a story to be told. So I'm, I'm telling you the story, though, though it's not a part of the book, where my father told my grandfather, uh -huh. There is on page 5, there is on page 5 where my grandfather and my father, my father and his father had an argument where my father said that, um, I don't know my father what he said. Huh? He said, why are you sending? My grandfather asked my daddy that, Prakash, why are you sending your girls to the most expensive faraway school? When there's a school close by, it will hardly charge you one rupee and it's a free school. And that time, my grandfather told his, uh, my grandfather was told by my father. <coughs> daddy told his daddy, his own father, that Papaji, and he used to call him Papaji, since I remember, that you decided what I do with my life, but you will not decide what I do with my daughters. That was a change. That was a change. That my father sent us, so he did not let my grandfather decide for the girls. Had he allowed my grandfather to decide for us, we would have never gone to the most expensive and the best school in the city. We would not have played tennis. We would have become probably just stayed at home and got ready one day uh, after minimum education to get married but with a very fat dowry because we would have had land and property to give and then get married off. But that was not my father's and parents dream. It was different. So. This is the story with it. I have now spoken to you already for more than a half an hour. I'll take a few questions from the uh, chat and then I'm going to come back to you. Okay? Now, rest of the story you will now pick up if you're interested in is read the book yourself. Okay? I'll leave it to you to choose. Now, let me see what my friends are saying and I'll take up a few questions and then I'm going to come back to you. Okay? Say okay. Is it okay? Is it okay? Say, raise your hand if it's okay. All right. So far, you've heard it. You've heard my story. So this is book reading about where I've shared a few pages of the book. Now, it says, oh, somebody, Kumar says, Kumar says, madam, we love you, virtual hug. Okay, virtual hug, Kumar, from my side too. My side too. So, Saurav Jha says, you haven't lost until you quit. Still learning many, many things from your life. Ma'am, I'm trying to imbibe in daily life. Thanks for being my motivation and reason. Thank you, Saurav. Love you for that. Yes, every day is a learning. There is no way. I learn every day. And you know what? Any morning I don't learn, I feel as if I've not done my homework. Let us say what Anshul says. Anshul Sharma says, True ma'am, being a national level player myself, I can vouch strongly that sports makes a person physically and mentally strong. Anshul, very good. And remember, it's not a question of winning and losing. It's a question of playing. Don't worry about whether you lost or played, but you're better than those who never played at all. So playing games is a very, very good thing. Enjoy your game. Then I say, um, it's all the season for ducks. It's all in the season. Uh, Paul, Paul says, it's all the season for ducks like me, ma'am. Okay. Uh, then let me go to another question. Then it says, uh, ma'am, it's only because of you I chose my, chose my dream to be an IPS officer. Wish you well, prepare hard and play a lot of games so that you become a strong IPS officer um, uh, and you have all the energy. 
Okay, Seema Wali says, once I also saw Tanga in my childhood when my choti Nanu meets us in Chandni Chong when he brought pile for me when I was six years old. He was an income tax officer of VN Bali. In spite of his busy schedule, he came to see me, meet me, spent happy time with me. I totally agree that our elders' love are very important. Our elders' love, eld, our elders' love are very important and good upbringing for any child. Then it says, "Ma'am, your book is available on Amazon Kindle. Love you lots. You were my inspiration. Yes, book is available on Kindle. I know that. That's true, Uma. Thank you. Yes, it is." Now listen, these books are written for you to take inspiration because you're asking me all the right questions and I'm so glad that my sisters have written this book for you. Sunita uh, Godra, I spent, uh, where is Sunita? I just saw her. I know that Sunita, I remember her Sunita so well. Where is Sunita? Upar Chaligi. Sunita and I did the program, wonderful time during Anna Andal. Sunita is a, is a champion. Sunita Godra, who joined this uh, conversation, Sunita Godra is a champion. She's a marathon runner and Sunita did a great job together. Sunita is an athlete. Sunita, lovely be connecting with you after such a long, long time. Lots of love, Sunita. Stay connected. Stay connected. Now you run marathons for the good of your town, wherever you are. She and I were with Anna Hazare together. So Sunita, thank you for rejoining me today. <laughs> Wonderful. Then let's look at others. Uh, can you please love from Malaysia? Somebody's joined us from Malaysia. Lots of love from Kuala Lumpur. Are you in Kuala Lumpur? I've been to your country. It's a very lovely city, Kuala Lumpur. Madam, you're so energetic. Where are you? What's your question? Let's see. Part when you do. Ah, you towed away Indira Gandhi's car. I'll come to that in another book one day. But my story writing will become is every Friday, 5 o'clock. That's what Asha and Isha want me to do. Am I right? Yes, yes. They're very, very demanding, fast. both of us. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> they both are very demanding. And you know what? They're loving the story themselves. Yes. They're like children listening to my story. Yes. <laughs> so this is how we'll sh keep sharing our story like you. Or like this. Now we need more. Uh, then let's see another question. Uh, there. I'm in Dubai. Somebody's in Dubai. How lovely. Yeah, I Dare is also another book of mine called I Dare. It's a biography and an autobiography. You can read that. That's a lot about the police work, how we did it, has a Tehar story, etc. So if you need to know more, because I want you to know that all the royalties which come from these book sales are dedicated, are dedicated as royalty to India Vision Foundation, which also educates the children of prisoners children of prisoners, programs in prison reform. So all these are, uh, so when you, if you pick up a book, remember it's going to the cause again and again. Anyway, but that's not what I'm sitting here to promote a book. I'm only promoting the ways which help me to, um, to reach this far and do whatever I can do till now. I don't know about tomorrow, but I only know till now, whatever has happened is because of the uh, blessings of my parents and my teachers and others. Now let us go to our children who have been here. Then I'll come back to another story. So well, Sunita, uh, Sunita is saying, ma'am, you narrated your story so well. I'm sure, Sunita, if you would be doing this, you would also be the Asian Marathon Champion. Sunita Godra has been an Asian Marathon Champion. She was with us in our, uh, she ran, imagine, Asian Marathon Champion. No ordinary lady. I will get Sunita another time. All right, let's go to our friends and children and ask them the story. What are their questions? It's now their time. Okay, now let me start with you. Nishant, ask a question. Oh, good evening. Oh, it was really interesting to read about how you created, you attempted to create that perfect balance between uh, your academics and extracurricular activities. So my question would be, um, it's a given that one cannot win at everything in life. You can't always be the best at everything. You have to face few losses. So, how exactly did you did you react? And how did you cope up with all these losses in between? It's a good question. I'll ask this answer this question. That how did I how did I manage my time and achieve so much both in sports and academics? Right. This is your question. It's a good question. The question is the question is a bit. But how do you manage? Like, if you faced any 
defeats or losses in your life, you didn't get selected in some path, something that you want to I think stick to your earlier question which will help you, which will help you a lot if I would answer the first question because the first question is immediately what is applicable to you. I want to pose a question in manner which immediately would help you and it will prepare you, help you now and prepare you. Yes. Okay, good. So, look, let me tell you what prepared me. What prepared me for respect for time? As a child, as a, your students, I had a very interesting timetable. And you know what? Every part of the day has, a, has its own energy. Like if you use, lose your morning, it's a lot of energy lost. And if you lose the um, school time and waste it, energy lost. And there's a reason for an evening and there's a reason to sleep. So if you don't sleep well, you are not getting up. So sleep well. Number one, sleep well. But you will never sleep well if you're not eaten right. And if you overeaten, you'll not sleep well. If you've eaten wrong food, you'll not sleep well. So sleep light. But you'll also not sleep well if your mind is confused. And your mind is under pressure. Or you've done something not right. Or you've cheated your own self. Or you've told lies. You'll not sleep well. You want to sleep well? To get your mental energy tomorrow? Then do all the right things at the right time. There's a time to study. There's a time to eat, there's time to sleep, there's time to wake up. So if you can uh, look, listen to your body, listen to your body clock and work with the body clock, it's like listening to the sunrise as you get up to the sunrise. You see, it's like sunrise to sunset. There's something to do with sunrise and something to do with sunset. And in between, you structure. If you, and then in between, you do that which you like to do which you want to do, which is the right thing to do. Like for instance, what was right for me? My school, my homework, my reading. Then at that time at your age, my tennis, my exercise, by listening to my parents and or even helping them at home. Whenever my mommy wanted me, I would my help my mommy do all the errands around. If I have to do some marketing for her, I would do it if mommy would call me in the kitchen say, Beta, ye tu ye de, tu ye, uh, ye bhar de. So that time we never had the gas. We had kerosene stoves. You know, we had those kerosene stoves, we used to pump the stoves. And we used to have those charcoal angitis. So my mother used to tell me, get the charcoal angiti ready. So I would go and make the charcoal angiti ready, which had smoke in it. And oh my God, it was lovely. Because then when you uh, make the roti on it, it has a taste. It's like the tandoori roti. It's delicious. What I'm saying is, you do the right thing at the right time. But if you do something which is meant for night, you do it during the day. And what is meant for during the day, you waste it all. You cannot sleep well. Because your mind is telling you, I've wasted my time. So I'm a product of that person I'm per who never, who utilized her time well. So I could do so much more. Because, and then there was a tension. Whatever I did had my concentration, had my attention. So if you focus on, and if you have your attention in what you're doing, you achieve much more. So if you're physically fit, mentally clean, and uh, physically healthy, and have a schedule as a student, you achieve much more. And then you are mentally more focused and mentally balanced to take on challenges which will come your life anyway. Look, COVIDs will come again and again. COVID is not one-time offense. COVIDs may come maybe when you are 70. When you are 60, the COVIDs of the kinds may come. What do you know? A war may come. A climate issue may come. These kinds of adversities and challenges can come and go. But your management of it has to be steady. What do you, how do you deal with it? You understand? Do you collapse? Or do you stay strong and deal with things as they come? So this was my first answer to you. Can I go back to the team? Thank you. Yeah, give it. Can I go back? To, yeah. So here we go. All right. Uh, I've answered Nishant. Now, Vansh, your turn. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, my question to you is that in your story, your father has used his influence to save an innocent person, ma'am, but 
in the present scenario, we all know how influential people escape the clutches of law without being punished man, for their wrong acts. So what can innocent people do when they don't have any influence now? Like, Today there are many support groups. Earlier, in fact, there were no support groups. Today, the social media is your biggest support group. If you are harassed wrongly, social media, if you put it on the social media, put up your issue, immediately gets picked up. Today, it can be of help. Earlier, you, have no, you had no, no, only a radio. There was not even a television. You only had the newspaper and you only had a radio. Why would radio pick up your news? And why would newspaper publish your news by and large? So you, have no, you had no voice. Today, social media is a big voice. And there are lots of immediate support systems which come to you social media. So it's not a helpless situation. On the contrary, today is a more helpful situation. See how moment something goes viral, the whole community gets after it. And how immediately uh, action is being taken if it gets exposed. If it doesn't get exposed, it's a different story. So well, that is not such that situation of the past. Things have changed a lot now. So that make good networks, it's a support system for you. Make good networks. Okay? Okay, Anjali, your question? Anjali, your question? Yes, ma'am. Um, as a, a female tennis player, you were played, uh, I mean, you were paid less than the uh, boys. So, uh, what did you do? Uh, how did you take a step against this? Well, I didn't make that an issue at that time because I didn't want to be mentally disturbed. Because you see, when you play competitive tennis, you have to stay very focused. And I was not playing for money. I was playing to learn. I was playing to become physically, mentally strong. I want to, for me, this was an academics. For me, sports was an academic, another essential part of education. Sports was not an add-on. For me, it was an extended education where I stretched myself. The word is I would go the extra miles every time to do more. It increased my stamina, it increased my determination, tested my willpower, it tested my endurance. So I, in many situations, yes, I did get less, but every time you, I didn't make an issue. But where I could, I did. I did question it and it did help me. So I was situational. Do I raise the issue now? Or do I do it another way? Or do I do it now? Or do I talk in the office? So I had to make and choose because I didn't, I had gone to compete and play. Because you need very focused concentration when you're playing tennis matches. And you're playing very tough matches where your mind and focus has to be very strong. So, but I was situational. I would raise it and sometimes I would not raise it. Sometimes I would write against it to my association, etc. So I was situation. And I think that's what life is about. It's not a machine where you put this in and now it will grind. Human, it's not a machine. You've got to be intelligent to see how do I deal with this situation. And that's what sports and academics, education and parents and teachers teach you. And you also learn from your own experience of life, how do you deal with the situation. That's what experiencing, more you do, the more you learn. Therefore, practical learning, more community work as students is important. Okay? All right, Anjali? All right, let's go to, let us go to... Yes, sir, thank you. Yes, Anjali? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Most welcome. Okay, Shubhangi, your turn. Um, nice. Can you take the burden you used to do? Whatever you want to do, but still there are some girls who face many problems when they are working to achieve their goal. So what mindset should they have? Girls have a problem, girls in, have reaching a problem. Goals, in reaching the goals, that's what you say. Reaching the goals, that's what you say. Yes, ma'am. Depends so on the mind, age. So which, age is there? which age are you talking about? Which age are you talking about? Sorry, ma'am. Which age are you talking which about? Which age are you talking about? Some young girls who are trying to achieve their goal Tell me and someone age. want to Tell join. Me. Like you, when you want to become an IPS officer, people always judge. So what mindset you have? Then you're not a girl anymore. Then you're a lady. 
people then you are already a youth then you are already a youth and if you do not know as a youth how to deal with it that means your schooling was poor your schooling was poor your college was not good your college was not good that means you never read your books properly that means you never acquired knowledge properly at all because by the time you are 21 22 and you entering a profession 23 and if you do not know how to uh, deal with these situations that means you have not trained yourself enough you have not equipped yourself through the kind of education you've got that means you're still a confused person and any education which does not give you clarity is not education it's literacy yes but not clarity clarity of mind is more important than a degree and stand to bangi yes sir thank you ma'am okay arunachal okay arunachal uh good evening ma'am so my question to you is about you know amount of misogyny that you faced uh, over the years So, from not being paid to the same boys to not being given your equal respect to even facing low levels of harassment by E teachers, you basically dealt with it like a brave teacher. So, my question to you is about how um, uh, when women do really, really well in quote unquote male dominated fields, why is suddenly their femininity compromised in these situations? They're forced with male titles like you were, for example, you are called the Punjab rappers. Instead of the Punjab sisters or whatever, or a female feminist rapper. So why do you think this sort of um, overt patriarchal norm even exists currently, and why are we not able to break that? Remember, society is made up of all kinds of people. Society is not one structure where everybody is speaking the same, doing the same thinking, and believes in the same, has the same perspectives. It's not the same. therefore you have to take take along these differences but stay on track on what you believe is the right thing to do so i look i knew that there were people hostile or they were opposing but there were also people who were appreciating but neither was i dependent on those who were appreciating me nor was i overawed by those who were hold trying to speak against me because i left it to them what they th- thought was right it's up to them i have to find live my own life myself so if i'm doing something which is morally ethically correct then i must go on whether i'm even if i'm alone doesn't matter but the good news is i was not alone i had my support of my family i also believed in what i was doing and i also had a silent appreciation but it didn't i was not dependent on social approval that is where you once you convinced that you're doing the right thing you also have family support at this young age then i think you have one all or you believe your teacher support you will have a grandparent support and if you believe you're doing the right thing in education in sports it works but there's no harm listening to your parents it's good to listen and do what is right and try and convince them Our listening is not a problem. Listening to them, maybe they have a very good advice for you. No problem, and maybe maybe that will help you. So listening to your elders is a good thing. But listening to the people, our dear Karavukar, let's go back and listen to your teachers. Go back and consult your parents, and then come to a conclusion. You understand that? Okay, let's go to the last one. Okay, Mugli Mati. She just joined us, isn't it? Yes, this one. Who are you? Who are you? That's fine. Okay, Muglimati. That's right. Where are you from? Switch on your mic. Switch on your mic, Muglimati. Muglimati. She got a network issue. Hi, ma'am. From Amakal, ma'am. What's your question? My mind flat. My mind flat. What's your question? My my question for you is, ma'am, today's world is filled with too many distractions. My my question. For 
for you is today's world is filled with too many distractions and it's a big challenge to focus on education for many students what would be your advice like constant reminder what would be your advice like constant reminder for our mind to focus on education is television a distraction is the television a distraction ma'am yes ma'am sometimes it's distraction for studies ma'am then switch it off <laughs> then the switch is in your hands switch it off how is it a distraction you switch it on when you want to listen to the news and you switch it off when it's a distraction switch it off so is the switch in your hands or somebody else's hands i'm asking i'm asking you ha so is the television switch in your hands is the remote in your hands or somebody else's hand somebody else is it in your hand or not not ma'am is it in your hand or not in your hand ma'am yes or no <coughs> yes ma'am that's it it off which means any distraction which is in your hand you switch it off you get away from it the choice is yours if you don't like noise anywhere you have the option to move away if there's a noise of a television and if you think that the family watching it you can't get, you get away why do you stay on if your phone is a distraction put it away it's your choice exercise your choice you must learn to exercise your choice okay yes ma'am yes okay i'll take the last few last one two three questions from the group okay huh from the from the facebook facebook friends i'll take something from the facebook let me see thank you ma'am you're welcome child where is my mask and covid protect <laughs> That's a good question. You are not. I have total social distance with you. <laughs> so, when you are on social distance with me, why should I have a mask for you? I'll have a mask with somebody else if I'm in public, and I. <laughs> so that's a good question. Good God, Jai Raju, you are a naughty person, whoever you are. <laughs> All right. mask is not when you are at home with yourself mask is when you are out in the public and you don't want try to do daily this so anshul sharma says thank you to you and your team saina barucha and isha arod somebody saying thank you to isha anshul sharma says thank you to school ma'am we hmm? had a webinar with them two weeks ago oh i see that's right that's anshul okay so madam please try to give us daily this kind of answers of students okay but fridays yes friday is with children now this group will can become a listening watch next yes. time and we'll have a fresh set of questions and we will uh, go to the next part of the series of the book so those of you who missed it i cannot go back but i'll introduce the book again as a brief but uh, we will keep going further uh saurav jha says saurav jha says stop looking at life through a keyhole open the door to the opportunity get involved and create the person that you will you were meant to become it's by conscious effort look if you you have to go to the sometimes the opportunity comes you get a good teacher you get a good opening you get a good examination out oh, today there are online courses all opportunities are open to you enroll for any online 
but if you don't enroll online and you don't spend time to learn and you don't put in that effort then you're losing an opportunity today covid time is giving you a lot of time to learn more opportunities so you can do that so it's a learned opportunity my morning sharan mehta says tell us your morning routine my morning routine is when i get up in the morning first i do my fitness program i do reading and i do my fitness i do both i read and i exercise and i say my prayers so i think we could now round up it's already 6 o'clock yes. till i meet you all friends next friday reconnect with you 5 pm friday we will take the book forward the reading of the book forward step by step till then if you wish to go into the book earlier then go to the um, amazon talk and it's all languages as i've explained to you you can uh, order uh, the book in all languages so pick up your language of your choice i hope they've got enough editions published uh, if uh, i'm sure amazon will manage it thank you and lots of love to each one of you who joined us in our chat on the facebook and joined us directly uh, otherwise and the young students i want to thank thank you thank you youngsters who joined us pop up the names again thank you nishant thank you nishant kumar thank you varsh varsh uh, jain thank you anjali thank you thank you mughal mati thank you ma'am thank you arunachalam and thank you shubhangi thank you very much and thank you ganesh you didn't ask me anything ganesh Okay now. Tell me what's your question? Tell me your question. Ma'am, if you are given a chance to go back up to a particular time, what time will you choose and why? If you had a wonderful, I would. If you were given a chance to go back to particular time, oh! If you have the magic, I'll go back home with my parents to play tennis with them and be playing playing with my sisters. I would love to go back. I love to be home with them. When mummy used to cook for me, such lovely food. We used to play sisters. All of us play together, play tennis on the tennis courts, and oh, give me a magic wand, I'll go home. Thank you for a lovely question, Garesh. You're a cute boy. You asked me the right question. Thank you so much, ma'am. <laughs> you touched an inner chord. I'll run back home. Yes. Okay. Which means you can't run back home. You can enjoy what you are. In. Now, wishes are horses. Okay. That if they were, everybody would ride them. But wishes are not. They are horse. These are wishes. they're not reality reality is when i was with them thank you i made the best of it and now where i am i i enjoy the best of it and make whatever i am as my family and love and take care of them okay all right ganesh so the point is yes if i were but that's not real that's it so wherever you are make the best of it okay bye bye all of you and thank okay. you very much all of you thank you Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 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 Thank